you need to memorize few theory questions because they keep on repeating okay so we are basically doing mcq paper 12 year 2014 so from 14 to 21 if we do uh, you should be okay to go with your uh, examination which is there on the 13th come on tell me what does an accountant do analyze financial information okay so who draws up a trial balance the accountant only does it while analyzing the information okay so who prepares the slc and plc the accountant who writes up books of prime entry the accountant okay now listen to me drawing up a trial balance preparing uh, slc a plc a or writing the books of prime entry these are clerical work this a bookkeeper does who does bookkeeper but analyzing the financial information is done by an accountant hmm. accountant does the major task these small small things just writing or preparing an account okay writing or preparing up an account is done by whom so all the writing up of the things is done by a bookkeeper and accountant will analyze the financial information so it is there come on read the second one which statement which statement is not correct correct will an account help to control cost yeah 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 okay yes accountant can help to control the cost can an accountant help to identify the profit trends yeah yeah because he is analyzing the information he can help to identify profit trends can an accountant motivate workers no no so this statement is not correct can an accountant monitor liquidity no what is liquidity turning your uh, assets into cash without any loss liquidity tells you your cash position hmm. liquidity tells you your cash position i hope you all are doing it simultaneously along with me yeah yeah okay fine come on read this and see what you all understand okay so very first thing that i would analyze over here is this can you analyze and tell me what does this mean Miss, it's that a flower shop is getting an order from uh, the field to where they want two hundred plants of dollars five. What I mean is of this statement. Good. I think it's like um, the yacht left her pay for it. This statement again. Plants were bought on credit for resale. Okay, that means you have purchased goods for resale. anything that you purchase for resale is called goods and if you purchase for use they are your assets so when you purchase goods must be the vast to account to be debited and credited so when you purchase goods can you give me the journal entry for it Miss, it we or uh, Miss trade pay uh, payable will come now. Is purchased on credit. From whom has oh. it purchased on credit? From your trade uh, um payable. What's the name? Uh, flower shop. A field, field. A field. Okay. So that means I have one purchases. I have purchased, and one I have received. I have purchased goods on credit. 
on credit means i'm going to pay on a later date now i have to see which account to debit and which account to credit think and tell me purchase is an expense or it is an income expense expense do you know the rule debit is all expenses and losses Yeah, and credit is all income and gain. So I think we see expenses and losses, and credit is all income and gain. Hmm. Okay. So purchase will be what? Debit. Debit and fee will be credit. Okay, fine. So from these two or uh, four options, see the options where purchase is debited. B and C, and in both the options, A to end is credited. Now, yeah. I have to decide the amount, whether it would be option A or option C. Option C. Bye. Twenty percent rate discount. Okay, so two hundred plans into five. One thousand and then one thousand का twenty percent is two hundred, so it will be eight hundred. Minus. The trade discount. Please write simultaneously with me. So I get eight hundred. So the entry will be recorded at eight hundred. Can you all tell me the names? What is this actually called? What is this actually called? Yes, For the list price. price. Oh, list price and cost price. This is called the net list price. Okay. Can you tell me what is the meaning of list price and net list price? Uh, miss, is the list price the amount that uh, you will you are buy you are like receiving, or your okay. like the amount that is the co that that is the cost of making the good and like the final amount. No, and list net price is, is the amount before trade discount. Oh, okay. Please uh, write it and then when you all go through it, you all can come through these terms. Okay. So this price is the amount before trade discount. Net list price is the amount after after, after trade discount. Yeah. And whenever you record your journal entries, you will always record it at which price? Net after trade price. discount. After trade discount, that is with yeah. net list price. price. Net list price. Once you get the net list price, okay. After that, there are two discounts that we give. What are these other discounts that we give on the net list price? Trade discount. Trade discount is this discount. Once you give this discount, you have to forget about this. This is also oh. recorded in the books. So once you give this discount, you have to forget about this because this is never recorded in the books. Okay. So after you get the net list price, whatever discount you give, it is recorded in the books. What would be the names of those discounts? So I'm trying to drill in some basic discount. Or Discount on that or discount, a uh, discount Bless on you. or discount allowed. But what is the term um. called? <laughs> what is the discount called? It is called cash discount. Oh, miss. Okay. Cash discount is always recorded in the books of accounts. Trade discount is not recorded. We just calculate and pass the entry. But after this, if you give cash discount in your journal entry, the word discount will appear. Question. 
ओके शुड आई प्रोसीड डू दिस ई वन analyze the information and tell what is this information about slcm maybe slcm and what do they want you to find they want you to find the balance hmm. at the end no. of the month hmm. balance that means you can prepare a rough slcm with just the amount hmm. slcm has what kind <coughs> credit balance credit balance the five i give you now debit balance hmm because you i said credit have... is saying debit yeah then i realized that we are also thought down that me thing <laughs> below that below debit balance what we write total credit sales for the month and everything else on the credit side credit side sales i'm writing everything else on the credit side come on give me the balance Eleven hundred or eleven thousand four hundred C. So the option is D. Yeah. But you have we have to make like this in the exam. So if you can you no stop making it. No, actually, yeah. Yeah. So you just write the amounts and do it in rough. Okay. Come on. This is not there. Come on, G. Business maintains a provision for doubtful debts. Two accounting principle for provision for doubtful debts. So give me the meaning of provision for doubtful debts. When you're not sure if the um person's gonna pay you. Okay. When you're not sure if the person is going to pay you or not. So what do you? Yeah. You make an R B C D for it. You make provisions for it. You make provisions yeah. for your estimated future loss. What do you make yeah. provisions for? Estimated, estimated future, future loss. So when you make provisions for estimated future loss, which accounting principle are you following? I think um, consistency and realization. No. Do you, see whenever you are making any provisions for estimated future loss, that means you are not being prudent. Miss, is it number? Yeah, it's prudent. Okay. What is prudent? Prudent means you are being very careful. Whenever you think that you are going to have loss, you record for it. That is being yeah. prudent. Okay. Okay, and we also follow the accounting principle of matching. Now, what is this matching? I have made sales uh, suppose in twenty twenty. Okay, and which sales would give you uh, estimated future loss? Credit sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, so suppose I made the credit sales in twenty twenty, and I estimate that out of these credit sales, some people are not going to pay me. So this estimation I will do in which year? In twenty twenty only, right? Yeah. Okay. So I create provisions in which year? Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. That means I am matching my income with my estimated loss of the same year. Okay. So I will put okay. the provisions in the same year. So I try to match my income. With my expense or loss, this is called matching principle. 
matching principle tells you income for the year should be recorded in the year whether you received or not what does matching principle tell you income for the year should be recorded in the year, in the year. whether you receive or not an oh, expense no. for the year should be recorded in the year whether you paid or not so that you get your profit for the year so you match your income for the year matching principle says you match your income for the year with expense for the year to no profit for the year you match and come for the of expense for the year to know the profit for the year that, that is related to the year would be recorded in this year only whether you received the money or not or you paid it or not or whether you estimate or not so two accounting principles that you follow when you when you are recording provisions for doubtful debts is what accrual and prudence accrual and prudence these are some things that you need to memorize along with you doing the mcq and then keep it in mind and go through the same thing again and again okay, okay. look at this and try to find me emily's profit for this you can make a sample balance sheet you can have all your assets at one place you can have all your liabilities at one place i normally write liabilities on the left and i write assets on the right tell me what are your assets made up of non current asset and current and current asset non current assets and current assets what would this give you this will give you the total assets this will give you the total assets very well which is 40000 okay and your total assets is always equal to your total liability total liability So total liabilities will also be forty thousand. Okay. Now liabilities is made up of three things. What are the three things? The liability section. Oh, uh, finance, my uh, capital, current liability, non-current liability. Yeah. Capital, non-current liability, current liability. Do you have any non-current liability? No, but you have current liability. You have current liability. So your total capital would be how much? Forty thousand minus twelve thousand. Yeah, twenty-eight thousand. Okay. Now you know when you write capital in the balance sheet, you write capital plus profit minus drawings. Capital at start plus profit minus drawings. Do you all remember anything about this? Yes, no. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now they've given us some information over here. Miss, I have told you. Where did we? Where did we get twenty-eight thousand from? Because the total liability was forty thousand, and the current liability so was twelve. You subtracted. Okay, fine. I got. So now you know that your capital at the end means capital at start plus profit minus drawings is twenty eight thousand. Can you all find the profit for me? Yes, not one second.
Miss, will we have to add it to find the capital? I don't find the problem. Find you try and figure out. Miss, I'm buying thirty-two thousand. What is your capital at start? Twenty thousand. You this don't is forty-eight thousand. Yeah, it's forty-eight thousand. You know the profit? No. No, Miss, you have to find out. And they said there is no drawing. So what will you do over here to come up to twenty-eight thousand? You'll add twenty-eight thousand to twenty thousand. Eight thousand will be the profit, oh. so that you get your closing capital as twenty-eight thousand. Yeah. Option A. Understood. Yeah. Got it. After I finish it, please redo the paper. Okay. Okay. Come on, the J one. Let's see. What? The answer is C. Why? Because how can there be skill and experience in a financial statement in a balance sheet? Okay. Yeah. There cannot be skill and experience in the financial statement in the balance sheet. No. So answer is C. Okay. Oh. With this, a little bit of theory. Two thousand fourteen MCQs are done. Okay, there were only ten yeah, MCQs in two thousand fourteen, but we can answer a little bit of theory. What is yeah, assets? The amount of right, right, right. um the properties owned by a business and amount you have to be paid. Yeah, right. I'm writing in short form. You are going to write in full form. What is liabilities? Amount yet to be received. Yet to be received. No, oh, sorry. Uh, Miss liability are the debts that the business has to. Yeah. So amounts owed by the business. Hmm. Yeah. Owed. Remember, this is owned and this is owed. Right. क्या हुआ वॉट इज ओनर कैपिटल दी अमाउंट ऑफ मनी द ओनर हैज पुट इन टू द बिजनेस ओनली मनी असेट सो कैन वी राइट फंड्स और रिसोर्सेस एंड यू कंप्लीट द स्टेटमेंट The owner has put into the business. Owner has put into the business or provided by the owner. Come on, put a tick on assets and liabilities. And keep telling. Motor vehicles and all that. Miss, a uh, creditor is a asset. Asset. Liability. 
Will, will debtor be a liability? Debtor is an asset. Bank loan is a liability and cash is an yeah. asset. Is this done? Now the next yeah. is you have to provide journal entries. You see, you have to make journal entries. Come on. Because I haven't learned journal entry and all that. Journal. Yes, I know you've not learned, but we can try. Then we'll okay. teach you. Try and understand the meaning of the statement. And first January paid 10,000 of his money into the business. So I think that's capital. Okay, capital. This will be bank and capital. You'll see it as bank, as own bank account. Yeah, so bank is bank account and capital would be capital account. Now capital yeah. always has what value? Debit. Sorry, credit, credit. Capital always has credit balance and drawings will always have debit balance. See me now. So capital always has what balance? Credit. Credit balance. And drawings always has what balance? Debit, debit balance. So debit what would be the journal entry? The journal entry would be bank, debit and capital credit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the normal standard entry for capital. Come on, read the next one and analyze. Come on, analyze and tell me what is it. Uh, miss, uh, I know that um, buying. I think it's purchases. Yeah, is this uh, plant is plant and equipment goods, or is it an asset? Uh, it's, it's an asset. Goods, I think. Goods are something that you buy for resale. Do you buy a plant or an equipment to resale? Think and. Do. This is an asset. Hmm. Plant and equipment is the machinery which you use to manufacture your goods. So very good. You have an asset and the name of the asset is what? Plant and equipment. Plant. Plant. So one account we got is plant and equipment. Come on. What is the second account? Paying half by check, half by loan. Hmm. Bank, I think. Bank liability. Yeah. Okay. You are paying half by check. So if you are paying by check, the second account is bank. If you pay full by check, so the second account would only be bank. But now, the second account is split. You are paying half by check. And the remaining half, how are you paying? By loan from ABC Finance. Loan. Loan or I could also say a liability you are creating of ABC Finance. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now think which account would be debit and which account would be credit, keeping in mind your prior knowledge. I think all plans and equipment will be um, credit. Miss, okay. I yeah, plants and equipment would be credit, yes. and bank I, and loan would be debit. Okay, now yeah. listen to me very carefully. A rule for assets and cash and bank. This is a rule for assets, cash and bank. If it is coming in, you will debit it. If it is going out, 
you will credit it. You, when you make the cash book, when the money is coming in, you debit the cash account or bank account. And when money goes out, you credit it, right? Yeah. Okay. Now keep that in mind and check if you have to change your answer. Miss, in this question, you're buying it now, so it'll be debited. Asset will what be debited. What you're uh, The asset. That's an equipment. That's an asset. That is debit. Because it's an asset. I'll go on debit side. And, and bank uh, uh, and the money will be uh, credited. So half amount yeah. is going in bank. It's going out of the bank, so this will be credit. And half amount, the liability. Liabilities is always credit, right? A yeah. liability is yeah. created. So this will be credit. Okay. So what is a journal entry? Uh, plant and equipment credit and... Uh, debit. Oh, sorry, plant and equipment debit and um, bank slash loan credit. Bank and AD loan. With me? Yeah. yeah. So two rules that we learned today right now. That uh, assets, will, if they're coming in, will be debit if assets they're going out. cash bank. In debit, out credit. Second rule. Debit on and losses. And credit all or incomes. And gains. Capital is always? Oh, credited. Capital is always? Credited. And drawings is always? Debited. Debited. Okay, fine. Come on. Next one. Miss one second. What are the two accounts that is involved? Debit and credit. In the third transaction. Okay. Drawings and um, cash. Okay. Drawings is always? Drawings will be debited because it's always debited. And, cash and with will cash will be credited. So can you give the third journal entry? Drawing. High product and cash 500. Drawing debit 500. Cash, cash 500. Yeah. <coughs> Next. How in my class? I think you're uh, paying off the loan. You're paying what? Read properly. Interest on Miss the loan. Interest on the loan. So give me uh, the account that you have already involved. Uh, bank. And? ABC Finance. What are you paying? Miss, so we get interest, interest. Oh, okay, yeah. Cash. For what are you paying? For the loan. Okay. So from the bank, what is the rule for bank? Bank will always be um, credited. No. 
I just told you assets, cash, and bank. Always be debited. Debited. If it's in debit, if it is going out from you, credit. Then credit. So what is it? Is the money so coming? So bank credit. Two hundred and ten and interest debit of two hundred and ten. Okay. Can you okay? You know that money is going out of the bank, so bank is credit. Can you relate one rule by interest is debit? Out of the rules that I taught you right now today. I told you that because is interest is an expense, so um, paying interest is an expense. So debit all expenses and losses. Income or credit all income and debit. So the entry would yeah. be interest one hundred and ten and bank two hundred and ten. Hmm. So it's not that hard. Just some rules you need to remember. Hmm. What are the rules that you need to remember? Uh, debit all. Uh, uh, debit is expenses uh, and losses, uh, and uh, credit is profits and gains. Next rule. That assets. Oh, no, sorry. That capital or um, bank and cash. Yeah. Oh, okay. Asset. Bank. Asset, cash, and bank. If it are coming in, it'll be debited. If they're going out, it'll be credited. I want you yeah. to write it along with me. Miss Agrippa. Miss Wong. Third rule. Capital will always be uh, credited. And drawings. Will always drawings be will always be debited. Okay. Fourth one, read. No, fourth is done. Fifth one. Um, so I think it'll be bank and um. Loan. So. From whom did you take loan? You took it from the. Yeah. ABC Finance. So bank and ABC Finance. ABC Finance. Yeah. Now debit and credit the loan. Bank will be the or uh, bank will be credit and ABC Finance will be debit. Okay. Thousand thousand. So your your liability is reducing when you're paying in. Yeah. Liability is always credit. So when you reduce your liability, it will be debit. Okay. Write it. What is the I can't see you. Miss who? No. Come on, six. Give me two accounts in one. Yeah. Oh, miss assets. No, the previous one. Miss, you can't write asset, right? So yeah, you can't. Asking, what is the name of the asset? Plant. Plant and equipment. So yeah. And second account. Miss can you write depreciation? Yes. What is depreciation? The cost of using the asset. The cost of using the asset. Okay. So is it an expense for you? Yep. Yeah. So depreciation would be? 
Okay. Next, they want you to find the annual rate of interest on the loan. They want you to find the annual rate of interest on the loan. Can you figure out and tell me what is the loan amount? Two hundred. Oh, sorry. Three thousand. Yeah, loan amount is three thousand. Okay. What was the interest? Two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten. How will you find the rate of interest? By doing it every year. So two hundred and ten into twelve, I think. Dividing it, na? I said dividing it by three thousand, yeah. So interest divided by loan into hundred. What is the annual interest? Seventy percent. Seventy. Seven percent, Karima. Yeah, sorry, seven percent. Miss four sounds like this. Uh, can we write it like in the working form? Yeah. Okay. What is? How can a bank overdraft the rights? When you don't have uh, enough, uh, okay. when how a bank overdraft arises? When you have in uh, sufficient money in your bank account, and you, or you could on... say when you have more, when you have used more than what you have in your bank account. Yeah. yeah. So you can say a business has paid out more from the bank than what it had paid in. Business has paid out more from the bank than what it had paid in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, next one. Read this and tell me what does this mean. Just the first statement I want you to do. Read and explain me what does that statement mean. Um, that Archie should a check like he um took a loan but it didn't come in his bank statement. Loan issued a check means you gave in a check to someone. Oh, okay, and that didn't um appear in the bank statement. Why would you give a check to someone? And your bank statement does not reflect about it. Your bank doesn't have enough money. Oh. No. Suppose uh, Prisha gives me a check. Okay. She is giving me a check, and I have just kept that check in my drawer. Okay, it's not cashed yet. It's not cashed yet. Not cashed yet. Yeah. So when I give a check and it does not appear in my bank statement. The reason could be that I did not go and go to the bank. 
to take the money or to collect the money so the term that is given to it is unpresented check what is it called unpresented check this is new to you all but just it was for one word so i explain okay yeah come on. read this Okay. So, if you know there are three types of ledgers, do you know there are three types of ledgers? Sales ledger has information about all your customers, credit customers. So, it will have personal account of your credit customers. Purchase ledger will have personal account of your supplier. That means the names of your suppliers. And all other accounts would come in the nominal ledger. That means all account of your expenses, losses, non-current assets. All these comes in your nominal ledger. Suppose A is your customer. So his account would come in which ledger? I can't see you. Suppose A is your customer. So his account would come in which ledger? Sales ledger. Okay. Ashita is my supplier. So her account will come in which ledger? Purchase ledger. Miss is double A. Rent is an expense. Ashita. Which ledger? Uh, nominal. Nominal. Cash would come in which ledger? Cash account. Um, cash. No cash. Come in cash. I think None of the. Yeah, book. cash. Machinery would come in which ledger? Are you buying that or like selling? You have this ledger. One, two, three, and four. Sales. You know, machinery the name of your customer. You can purchase machinery also. No, uh, machinery will come in. Will it come in cash book? Is machinery the name of your customer? No, it's not. Is it the name of your supplier? No, will it come in cash book? Is it cash? No. So everything else comes there? Oh, general ledger. General ledger. Bad debts account will come in which ledger? Uh, cash. Is bad cash debt book. cash? Yeah. Miss, will that also come in nominal? Yeah, everything else nominal ledger. Depreciation okay. will come in which ledger? Nominal ledger. Okay. Prisha is my trade receiver bill. Her account will come in which ledger? Sales ledger. She is my trade receivable. Her account will come in the sales ledger. Okay. Uh, provision for doubtful debts will come in which ledger? Uh, nominal. Nominal account. Loan will come in which ledger? Nominal. Nominal. Okay. Nominal. So customers' names would come in sales ledger. Suppliers' name would come in. Supplier's name would come in. Purchase. Everything else would come in. Nominal. Cash and bank would come in. Uh, cash. No, uh, cash book. Cash book. Please keep on memorizing this and writing it. So name one ledger account. Name one account. That would come in the nominal ledger. Miss, name one account, what's love? Give the name of an account that would come in nominal ledger. I could say machinery account would come in nominal ledger. Oh. 
I could say rent account would come in a nominal ledger. Bad debts account. Debts account would come in a nominal ledger. I could say sales account would come in a nominal ledger because sales is income. Yes? Yeah. Name other types of ledger which a business maintains. So in this we can write sales ledger, purchase ledger and all. Sales ledger, purchase ledger, why do you divide your books into ledgers? This is theory. So it's, yeah, so it's easier for the business to calculate its... It's easy to it, refer? Yeah. And work can be shared. Between several people. So one person can make all the customer's account. One person can make all the supplier's account. One person can take care of the cash book. One person can take care of the petty cash book. One person can take care of all the expenses. So that is why we divide our books into ledgers. I would need your notes. Okay. Now I am leaving this to you all. You have to prepare a corrected trial balance. Okay. It means you should know what comes in debit and what comes in credit. So the what comes in debit, you will write the amount on the debit side or on the credit side. And at the end, your total of debit should be equal to your total of credit. You have to prepare the trial balance. Come on, keep on telling me what comes in debit and credit. Um, Bank overdraft? Debit. Cash? Credit. Or debit. Miss Counter also come in debit. Cash is an asset. So when you prepare trial balance, you follow the rule of clips and spades. Oh yeah, I'm see the last time. Clips is credit. And, and spades is, is, yeah. is uh, debit. This is capital, liabilities, incomes, and, uh, incomes uh, and sales. Yeah. And see? Yeah. Sales return, purchases, Assets, drawings, right. and expenses. Yeah. Come on. Fixtures and fittings. Credit. Isn't it an asset? Debit. Debit. Provisions are always credit. Okay. Credit. Okay. Fees receivable. That means receiving it's Outstanding credit. Income. Yeah. Outstanding income is what? Credit. Credit. Credit or liability? It's an asset. It is an? Asset. Asset. Which side? Credit. Sorry? Credit. Over here you would say it's receivable, so this is income. An income credit. Payable, that means it is an expense. Yeah, so that will be double. Thank that will be debit. Rent payable, what is it? Rent payable. Yeah, la that means oh, you yeah, so yeah, oh, will have to pay the rent, so I think double. Yeah, but in the trial balance, you will just see whether it's income or expense. Receivable, payable, you won't check. Only for trial balance. So income, credit, expense, debit. Advertisement. Advertisement. I think debit. Debit because you're paying for the advertisement. This expense. This wages yeah. would also be debit. You classify it into this, this category for a uh, uh, trial balance. Wages is an expense, so debit. Loan. Loan would also be debit. 
no yeah no it will be credit sorry yeah i'll credit capital credit capital is always credit debit hmm. and then your total of debit and credit should tally this you will prepare it yourself tell me an account that you prepare when your totals of debit do not match the totals of your credit if there is a difference in the debit total and credit total which account do you open balance sustained account 